Hi, this is Binod Suman. Today I am going to start uh, one video um, episode on the Amazon Web Services. So any persons who, who want to go for certification, Solution Architect certification on the AWS, this video might be very useful for them. And this is the first video I am going to give introduction of the AWS. Uh, before jumping into the AWS, let me very bit explain what is the cloud computing. Why the person are moving towards the cloud computing? So as a definition, uh, what is cloud computing? It is the on-demand delivery of the out, uh, in IT resource and the applications uh, through the internet, via the internet, and you have to pay, uh, pay as you go pricing way. Means how much you want the resource, either the software or the applications, you have to pay only that much. Let me take one example. So it be, might be very useful for you. So suppose today in your office, in your premises, you want to set up one web service. That required might be many hardware. Suppose it required the five uh, uh, high speed server, and then required the database, and uh, all the internet gateway, everything, DNS, everything required. So you have to purchase those much logistics, you have to set up. You need the space, you need the power consumption facility, you take you take the many permissions to set up those infrastructures, and then a lot of things are there. Then only you could able to set up those infrastructures. But with the help of the cloud computing, you can do all those things in just within five minutes. So suppose if you want to five uh, high speed server, you go AWS and take the five machines. And you can configure those five machines. So if you take the advantage, what is the advantage of the cloud computing? First is the variable and the fixed expenses. Suppose you need, you need, you are expecting that you will get this much of the uh, traffic on your uh, website. You took five machines. But down the line, only traffic is not much high. So it is the underutilized. So again, you have to, uh, unnecessarily you uh, invest so much money on the five machines. In opposite side, if you expect the five machine is sufficient, but traffic is high, and you thinking you need the eight machine, then again you have to purchase the eight machine. So it is the uh, confusion between the variable and the fixed expenses. But in the case of cloud computing, how much you want the resources, computing power, you can do on the click of the mouse. So you can easily do that. Second is the maintainability. If you keep the five big server in your premises, you have to maintain. So power, electricity, space, everything you have to maintain. But in the case of uh, uh, cloud computing, you don't need to do anything. No, no, nothing is there. Just you go the uh, AWS and take all the five machines. Electricity, as I say, important thing is the uh, uh, agility. Means whenever you want to the system, immediately you can get it. If you uh, take the example in our office, you need a lot of permissions and the uh, uh, finance department, this department, that department to give the permission for that. But here you can take it very easily. Scalability, this is very important thing. So if you need the five machine, you go the five machine. After two days you want the three machine, you can reduce the three machine. After ten days you want the five machine more, you can do that. So take the example of some uh, um, use case, any HR system. If you see the HR uh, system website, that might be very huge traffic at the end of the month or the end of the month. And between there is not much traffic. So in that case, you can configure, so I need the machine, more machine, starting in the ending of the month. You can do that. Cost effective, if you purchase your own five machine, you might have to pay very huge money, but it will be comfortable, you have to pay the less money. Security, uh, Amazon come, comes up with a very high security and there are many kind of security associated with the cloud computing. That is the first priority uh, that AWS uh, gives us. And the variety of services, not only the uh, computing power, you can take the any services like the data bearing house, database, uh, directory service, internet gateway, DNS, all those things you can get uh, just on the mouse click. You have to pay as per your requirement. So these are the benefit of that. and. Uh, uh, so let me, and there, in the market there are many um, mm, uh, companies are there who provide the cloud computing. We have the uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, Amazon AWS, then IBM, many companies are there. 
but uh, I am going to start this episode on the AWS, Amazon Web Services. Okay. So, uh, today's introduction class and uh, I am going to explain how many type of services uh, providing by the AWS. And those services I have categorized, so it might be easy for you. So, first I will talk about the um, computer and the network services means compute power. Then further I will uh, discuss all those things. So, in the compute power, the first important thing is the EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud, Amazon EC2. This is a very basic requirement. So, with the help of the EC, EC2, you can create the uh, Linux machine, you can create the Windows machine, whatever the uh, operating system and which kind of machine you want to create, you can create. Just you have to go there, uh, management console, uh, choose the machine capacity, how much RAM you want, how much storage you want, which operating system you want, you can go and uh, create the machine. This is the very basic primary thing here. Second is the AWS Lambda. So, if you see the use case of the many um, uh, project, many, you need the many compute power items on certain point of time. Suppose, if you have to send the emails to thousand of the credit card holder, and that only applicable at the end of month. So for that, no need to have a one dedicated machine for those kind of service. Your backend will be executed without having the any dedicated machine, and that is called the serverless computing power, and that's come under the AWS lambda. Third is the auto scaling. As I was discussing that, suppose if you uh, create one EC2 of the 20 GB RAM or the 20 CPU, but it is not required at all the time. In that case, you set the auto scaling. So you can set this time of period, this pattern, you want to scale it up, scale it down. So whatever the machine you have configured, you can do the auto scaling. That is not possible in the our premises, right? But with the facility of auto scaling, you can up or down the scaling of the EC2. The load balancing, it is also one of the important thing. So as I discussed that, on the, if traffic is going to high, you need the many machines, one machine is not sufficient. Then you can set the load balancing, automatically they will uh, 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 distribute your traffic in the different machines with the help of the load balancing. Uh, next is the elastic bin, uh, bin stop. Suppose you want to set up or develop one website that required the EC2 load balancing, scaling, uh, many software like the PHP, uh, .NET, uh, Node.js, many database, all those things you can get in one shot with the help of the bin, uh, bin stock. That is also very, one of the very, you know, adaptive features of the AWS. Second, next is the VPC, Virtual Private Cloud. So if any organization want to make the isolation, uh, logical isolation of the AWS cloud, they can do the VPC. In the VPC, they can define the range of the IP address, they can define their own subnet, they can uh, define the routing table, all those things, uh, uh, internet gateway, all those things, they can define into the, um, inside the uh, VPC. This is one of the important feature in many organizations do this. Direct connect. So, suppose you have some infrastructure in your premises, and some in infrastructure in the AWS, you want to connect, uh, um, uh, dedicated connection if you want, then you can use the uh, AWS direct connect facility by which you can uh, dedicated connect, you can get the direct connectivity between your premises infrastructure and the AWS infrastructure. Next is the Amazon Root 53. It provides the DSN uh, facility, the uh, DNS and uh, domain name service, so if you have any IP address and that IP address might be not able to remember by your customer, so you can convert the IP address into the subnet like the abc.com, your business name.com, that facility you can get it. Come to the storage part, storage is the content delivery. This is one of the also important thing. When you make, when you create the EC2, it comes with uh, their own internal uh, storage. If you want to add some uh, more storage, you can do that uh, uh, EBS, uh, Elastic Block Store. So, 
you can, you have to create this separate. Then you can connect this EBS to the uh, EC2. And inside the uh, availability zone, it automatically replicate it. And um, even system is down, your data might be there. So uh, this is the additional um, uh, storage you can provide to the EC2. Next is the Amazon S3. Why is called the S3? Means simple storage service. So this is the very unique kind of uh, storage service provided by the uh, uh, Amazon. This is the HTTP based uh, storage. So uh, this is not like the D drive, C drive. Means from the outside also whatever the data, content, image, video, whatever you have given, keep inside the this storage you can access from the outside. So they have the versioning system, they have the access system, uh, access permissions. So those kind of things you can do the S3 and uh, any type of content you keep it there in the S3. And uh, backup you can take it. And next is the Amazon Glacier. Amazon Glacier is the, uh, if you see the old, old days kind of things used to have the magnetic tab. So any any uh, any backup kind of data, it is not required every day. Uh, very few times if you want to access those kind of data, those data you can keep into the Glacier. It is respectively very uh, less challenge out there, Glacier. Uh, Glacier. Next is the storage gateway. So as I am talking with the direct connect, is you can direct connect the AWS from the premises. The same way the storage gateway. So if you want to get the direct connectivity between your premises to the storage service, you can use the storage gateway facility. Um, this is the cloud front. So if you have the supposed to AWS setup, you want to connect the two uh, AWS uh, uh, connectivity between the two AWS setup, you can use the cloud front. So a lot of movement of data and all those you can do with, with the help of the cloud front. Coming to the database services, so as I said, Amazon is not only provide the hardware infrastructure, it's also provide the software infrastructure. So suppose if you want to uh, have one database service, so you can you can uh, take the uh, Amazon RDS is the personal database service like the Postgres or the any RDBMS service uh, um, yeah. in build uh, uh, database with the machines you can get with the help of the RDS. And DynamoDB is the uh, uh, non-SQL database. For any non-SQL database facility if you want to go, you have to take the service of the DynamoDB. Redshift is the uh, data rearing house, petabyte data, huge data you want to that and you want to get the kind of service of the um, uh, uh, this the data mining kind of things, data bearing house, then you can go for that. Elastic cache is that is the caching. If you want to get the good performance of your web services, so you use the elastic cache. So a lot of the common things, it will store in the cache. And if it is not in the cache, it will go hit the backend side, take the data and keep update the cache. So it will give the good uh, performance of your uh, any applications or the project. Come to the management tools. These are the tools we can provide it by the Amazon. So we can you can watch your AWS or the services like the Cloud Watch. Cloud Watch is that. So if you want to uh, uh, logging, monitoring, all those things, you can do the Cloud Watch. How much your billing system is there? Those things if you want to get, you can get it uh, through the Cloud Watch. Cloud formation is very interesting thing. So if you uh, if you want to get these services, so how you can get the services? You have to go to the AWS Amazon.com, get the management console to it. But you can all those things through the uh, scripting language also, through the JSON and through the YAML file uh, in the cloud formation. You can create the compute setup. The benefit is that. Suppose today you want to create one infrastructure and you want to create the same kind of infrastructure again. So you have to do all the work again and again. So if you have the scripting, so through the scripting, you execute the script, the complete infrastructure you can get in very less of time. So that is the things. And the benefit is that cloud formation, you can do the scripting and you have the um, drag and drop facility also. So you can do that designing we have. Cloud drive. All the logs, everything, uh, you can get it through the cloud trials. You get the log in the cloud trials and put into the Glacier or the S3 for the monitoring purpose. 
config so uh, for any kind of configuration in the aws you want to export or import uh, the configuration you can uh, get it from the uh, aws config now the security part security and the identity uh, very important thing is the uh, uh, iam identity and the access management any of the service who is going to access is this which user has this kind of permission which kind of authorization authentication everything you can set up through the iam suppose i i create one st and i am giving this access to one user who can only read this data or the full access of the st those kind of things you can create into the uh, this service iam and the kms uh, key management services so if you have the need decryption encryption key private and public key those kind of key you can take the manage through the kms directory service like the um, microsoft uh, active directory those kind of facility you can get through the directory service certificate manager so uh, it provide provision with the all the certificate provision maintaining and all those things so through this you can maintain all kind of certificates and the firewall aws wf web application firewall so if you website in your website if you want to give the firewall facility you can give that and the application services api gateway very nice for the developer who create manage and all those api all the permission access for the api get the monitor activity for the api those facility you can get from here uh, simple notification service amazon sns so for any kind of uh, work if you want to notify to any people so you can use this notification service so suppose you set up that uh, if something happen and pass the threshold like your billing system is going to be on the certain dollar so if you want to set a notification you can set a notification service very important it will be applicable to many services and uh, they have the email service also so uh, it will provide their own uh, smtp server and all those things to send the server simple workflow service hwf amazon hwf suppose in the background you have the many work and you want to execute one after that some jobs should go parallel some jobs should go the sequencer how to set up all those jobs in the background so with the help of the amazon uh, hwf you can do that amazon sqs simple queuing service this is the messaging system uh, publisher sub subscriber so if you have the huge data coming in your system and you want to handle those huge data kind of the kafka or the any messaging system you can take the service to take the huge data and uh, um, the important part of the aws infrastructure so uh, aws uh, divided this world in the many regions so divided means they have the many regions where their infrastructure are there um, in the many country they have that and they uh, AWS called that the region, and in one region they have the many availability zone data center. So uh, suppose the US they have the many availability zone, India they have the many availability zone. So and uh, thing is that where you should, when you create the, take any service you have to specify for the EC2 which region you want to create the EC2. So according to use case or the users where they locate. so network latency should be reduced accordingly you can choose the regions and the how to access the aws there are three ways here you can go the aws.amazon.com or uh, command and arguments also there uh, uh, that i will explain in the coming down video we have the aws sdk short development kit we can get it and uh, one thing is that the amazon uh, aws model it uh, ias means infrastructure as a service platform as a service and the software as a service so this kind of service they provide we will see all those things in uh, uh, coming down the videos and thank you very much and uh, um, happy reading happy watching and subscribe my video to get all those uh, new videos going to add in my uh, vinod suman academy on youtube thank you very much